Hello, fellow Araxians. Today I want to talk to you about the flow of battle. I want to cover this in three sections. The first being the macro. That's how population moves across the entirety of the map. The second being the micro. How forces move through any specific base. And the final is the spawn system. What does it need to achieve fun, balanced fights across the entire map? In the early days, there was chaos, otherwise known as the hex system. As long as you touched a territory, you could attack it. When a fight ended, who knows where that population was going next. The beauty of this system was it felt like such an open world. You could really go anywhere you wanted. The problem was it was tough to find the fight sometimes. So the lattice was adopted to try to make it more predictable as to where the fight would be next. The system was an improvement, but still very phase one. It needs more work to become fully functional. I propose the Hybrid Hex Lattice System. Please don't get scared off by perceived complexity. This system will actually make it more intuitive as to where the battle is going to go next. It'll give the spawn system more tools to ensure there are fun, balanced fights on all lanes of engagement. And it will provide strategic depth that players and outfits so desperately crave. Planetside 2 has gorgeous, intricately designed continents. But so much of the landmass goes unused because there is little point to defending the territories in between facilities. What this system does is makes it relevant to fight over territory outside of the bases. If you've ever had a battle across that bridge between Scarred Mesa Skydock and Regent Rock, you know how epic it is. But it rarely happens because that bridge is meaningless in terms of territory control. In a hex lattice system, that bridge is a lot of territory and could even win you an alert. So let's dive into the nuts and bolts of this system. The first thing we would do is go back to the old territory control system, where if you have a hex touching another hex, you can attack and control that territory. The facilities will still have a larger footprint and use the control point mechanic for capture. They will be interlinked via a series of single hexes. If you want to push up to the next facility, you will have to capture the three or four hexes in between to gain adjacency. The control of these hexes is determined strictly by player population, whether on foot or in a vehicle. It is a tug of war over the course of 30 seconds. As long as you maintain the most population in that hex for 30 seconds, it switches to your faction's control. Let's take a look at this system in action. The VS are pushing up from Indar Excavation, about to hit Quartridge Camp. Rather than directly breach the facility, they have an option to lay siege to the facility by capturing the hexes around it and cutting it off. The TR can decide to hunker down and try to defend that capture point. Otherwise, they are dependent on their vehicles carrying on the battle outside and keeping their supply lines connected. And this is the point where the actual lattice lines still serve a purpose. So even if the VS did decide to just bypass Quartz and cap their way up to Havar Northgate Garrison, they couldn't attack that base until they finished their siege at Quartz Ridge Camp. In this manner, you create strategic depth while still controlling where the battle happens. Now I want to point out, this concept is by no means an original idea. I think I've gone the farthest in terms of visualizing it, but this has been kicked around by players and devs since pre-alpha. The closest the developers ever got was what they called the rush lanes. They're really no different than the lattice system. All the hexes are just shaped strangely, so you can't hop in any direction, but there's still basically one base per hex. The concept of the rush lanes is similar to the hex lattice hybrid, but it lacks the necessary granularity. What needs to be generated is a system where you can visually tell where the battle lines are, and so the spawn system can actually cue in to where the fight is happening. Not within 500 meters, but within 50 meters. Adding lattice lines directed the forces, but it didn't fix the problem where everyone globs up on tiny little points on the map. In fact, it exacerbated it. It lacks strategic depth, it's bad for performance, 
and it doesn't take advantage of 90% of these gorgeous continents that you spend a shit ton of money developing. I'm certainly picking up the torch from a lot of different people. And before we wrap up, I want to give a shout out and the last word to a guy named Noble from Azir Twilight. And while I don't think his idea was flushed out quite well enough to really get it to stick, I think he took it farther than anyone else, and I give him major props for that. He took it so far, he even got it in front of the devs in a community design meeting that he produced and hosted. Let's take a moment to listen in on his idea from almost four years ago. It was used in early beta, known as Neutral Territory. See, these were zones that were not owned by anyone. They didn't contribute to influence, but were also a playable game space at the same time. Fight still happened in neutral territory. These territories can be used in many interesting ways. By creating both hard and soft choke points across the entire strategic landscape, this now adds a completely new dynamic of strategic flow to continents. The only point that he didn't flesh out well enough, in my opinion, is it's not just the negative spaces. It's those single hexes in between bases that creates that vital strategic flow to these maps. The thing I really want people to take away is this. You can add continents. You can revamp Indar. You can revamp bases on Indar. You can revamp specific biolabs. But it doesn't matter until you flesh out and nail the underlying meta of the flow of battle. I realize a lofty concept like this leaves so many questions. How are you going to deal with zerking? How are you going to deal with back capping? How does construction fit in this system? There are so many, they are all valid, and I do have a very comprehensive list of answers that I hope to get out in the next three videos. If there are any specific concerns you have, please leave a question or a comment, and hopefully I can address yours in one of those videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more, please consider hitting that subscribe button or dropping a like. And as always, I will see you planetside.